What's up guys, Jeff with Shock Surplus. This time around we got the Bill Stein 8100s and the BP, Onan Emu BP51s on the table. Uh, we get a lot of calls with customers asking us the differences between the two, so decided to put it out on video for you guys. Uh, starting off with the Bill Stein 8100 coilovers. Um, these are a um, co coilover with a reservoir system. They are adjustable in height, but they are not they do not have any adjustable damping. Bill Stein already does a good job at, at having these shocks already valved for your vehicle specifically. Um, these use a full uh, 60 millimeter piston. Uh, there is three stages of compression damping and then there's two stages of uh, rebound damping. The, uh, on, the, on the compression side, um, or on the compression side of the, the damping, there's your main piston and then they have the jounce cut off there's two stages in the jounce cut off and then what that jounce cut off is that's going to be your bottom out protection um that, that that's going to be where um you you have your your main piston uh with the compression stack and then um once you get to a certain point in the shock travel uh you hit the jounce cut off and in that jounce cutoff, there's two stages that pre help prevent you from bottom bottoming out the suspension too hard, and essentially eliminates the need for having for for needing to run an external um, an external bump stop. The this is a comp uh, a digressive valve piston, so having that jounce cutoff is especially nice if you go out to the desert a lot and you're you're constantly seeing those big wh bigger whoops, um, larger bumps. Uh, so you'll have that nice street riding uh, coilover from um, from that digressive piston, and then with that jounce cutoff, you have that extra uh, bottom out protection. And then on the rebound side of things, there's your um, in, in your main piston. There's the um, rebound uh, your rebound stack, and then you have a secondary uh, rebound piston, which uh, helps eliminate those harsh. Uh, Far, the harsh rebounds, especially when you're coming coming off of like a, a larger larger bump or a larger whoop, what happens is that spring will, will tend to want to make that the front end of your truck want to kind of jump up, and with the uh, the rebound stack combined with the secondary rebound um, piston, you you, just, you essentially have a super smooth riding shock throughout its full range. Now on the Old Man Emus, the BP-51s, these are an internal bypass and they are adjustable. So you have your rebound and your compression adjusters on the uh, strut, bo strut bodies itself. Old Man Emu does uh, include a spanner wrench to adjust the rebound and compression. The 51 in the BP-51, that stands for the size of its piston. Um, so while the the 8100s have a 60 millimeter piston, these BP51s have a 51 millimeter piston, and the reason for that is because the you have a piston that's inside of the shock body, uh, and then in the shock body itself is uh, ports that um, it, it are the bypass ports, and when you make adjustments to the the rebound and the compression adjusters, what that does is it'll close off some of those ports to either increase or decrease the amount of damping that you have. Here we got the Old Man Emu BP51s. These are rebound, or these do have rebound and compression adjustment. Um, you make your adjustments here on the coilover body itself um, with the included spanner wrench that Old Man Emu it provides with their kit. Uh, these are an internal bypass with a 51 millimeter piston. Um, the way the adjustments are made on these coilovers is um, in the coilover body or in the shock body, there are ports that are um, milled in, which are the, uh, the the bypass ports. And when you make uh, adjustments to your rebound or your compression um, adjustments here, you close off those ports. Uh, when you close off those ports, you're increasing your rebound, comp uh, rebound and your um, compression damping. Um, and then you, when you soften everything up, you kind of you open up those ports to allow more fluid to flow through and bypass the main piston. Um, 
Now, these, with that being said, uh, because the sh the coilovers have the bypass ports milled into the body, they do have to use a smaller piston. Otherwise, you you would have to have um, a pretty big shock body um, to to fit the the bypass tubes. Now, moving on to the rear shocks, you have your Bill Stein 8100 uh, series shock here, and then your Old Man Emu BP51s. Now, unlike the front, both of these are going to be um, bypass shocks, with the bill signs being an external bypass and the bill signs being an internal bypass. Uh, both have your adjustable rebound and compression. Uh, they are just made a, a little bit different. You'd see here that with the external, external bypass, you are able to run, or bill sign is able to run a, six, a full size 60 millimeter piston. Um, and the bypass tubes, and because the bypass tubes are external, um, there is no need to run an internal bypass tube or run a smaller piston. Um, these bypass tubes are, um, are what uh, would allow that uh, shock fluid to kind of bypass that main piston. Uh, on the Old Man Emu BP-51s on the rear, they are still a ex uh, internal bypass just like the front. Um, and they are adjustable um, on the shock body. Uh, here's a little bit better of a look um, to see the rebound and the compression adjustments here. Um, you just, in these grooves, you would just slide that spanner wrench and turn the, um, turn the collar, uh, depending on whether or not you want to frame up or soften up your, your dampening. Whereas on the external bypasses on the bill, bill steins, you have this jam nut here. And you'd loosen that jam nut and you would turn in these screws here. You would turn it in to increase the damping and then you would turn them out or loosen them to um, decrease the amount of damping that you have. Um, now, who are these for? Um, I mean, different, different people are going to have different preferences. Um, Old man emus are, are going to be for your more overland type of um, customer or your, over, your overland type of build where you're going to have more weight. Um, you're, you're usually driving a little bit slower to get to your destination. You're enjoying that ride to your, your campsite and you're, you're driving a little bit slower, but you still want the adjustability and the comfort while you're getting from point A to point B. Um, now the Bill Steins, they, they're going to be more for someone that likes to, to go fast and hit the trails hard. Someone that's going to go faster, um, doesn't make too many adjustments to their setup, uh, but just wants something that works and works great out of the box. Um, the, you can see the, the fittings and the hoses on the Bill Steins are going to be a little bit bigger, allowing for more fluid to pa pass through, uh, to the reservoirs, um, both of these are going to be rebuildable uh, and, and revalvable. Uh, the bill signs are a little bit longer than the bill signs. So what that means is you're going to have a little bit more travel out of the bill signs compared to the old man emus. Um, but if you're, um, if you're overlanding and you're not taking those technical trails or you're just kind of going a little bit slower, uh, then having the, the most and having the most travel isn't the most important thing to you then the old man emus are going to be great. Um, having the adjustability on the front and the rear is super nice. We actually have these on our t one of our Tacomas here, and they have been riding excellent. Um, the, the adjustment range is uh, super. The, there's a huge adjustment range, um, and making small adjustments here and there definitely uh, is noticeable in the ride quality. Um, I personally like to go fast. I... I I like to get from point A to point B and from campsite to campsite as quickly as I can sometimes. Uh, so having, um, having the bill signs uh, is something that I would kind of lean towards just because um, there, there's a little bit more travel out of them. Uh, the, they're kind of a set it and forget it on the fronts and then the rears since my rear, uh, my rear weight is changing pretty often. Uh, I, I, having the uh, adjustable, adjustable um, rears is a good thing for me to have just because my rate, 
my weight changes a lot. Uh, there's times where I'm towing things. Um, there's times where I drive out for a day trip and I don't have anything in the bed. Have, having something like this would be um, beneficial to me. Um, if you have any questions or if you need help uh, with which way to go, give us a call and we'll be more than happy to answer those for you.